Hey guys, my name is Tom from Filmatura and today I decided to pronounce the name of my company in a different way. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, I wanted to make like a super short video. It's probably not going to be super short, but I wanted to show how I organize my tool library in Fusion and what are some of the uh, things that I've learned over you know, using Fusion and over, you know, trying to manage it and make sure it's all, uh, you know, readable and it's easy to understand. So I've got this one tool, this new tool that I want to buy. It's like a rougher, it's a two flute rougher, pretty incredible, it can take 0 0.5 millimeters when roughing, chip load, which is insane, and it's 32 millimeters diameter. And we will put that in the library in a second, but let me pop into the library. So you go into uh, manufacture, and then here you click tool library, and here's our tool library. So my tool library is organized like so. I've got Super Minimal 2. This folder has all the tools that are currently in the machine, except this one. I'm actually lying, but all of these tools are in the machine in this order in these holders with these shanks it is like an exact representation of how the machine is loaded up right now if i ever change anything i take the tools and i get them out of this list this list never goes over 20 here the reason for this is well i want to be able to you know change up whatever uh, whatever if I change something up I want to be able to look here and know hey I changed this and um, I this is tool number four now not, not tool number three or something so that's how I got it laid out there's also a little bit of the um, the order in which these tools are uh, probe is tool 20 for simple reason, most most of the time you use a probe, it, it's on tool 20, and it's because I have uh, the umbrella uh, tool changer. I don't have the the arm style. Um, it's very slow tool changes, so you're kind of trying to optimize a little bit um, between tool changes, so you don't jump from tool 20 to tool 10, and then to tool one or something, because then you're wasting a ton of time. So the way I do it is I usually probe, so tool 20, then it goes just one. I do a face run, um, then I uh, do a fly cutter run, uh, then I want to start roughing with this. Usually I roughed with the 10 millimeter here, this one. Um, uh, but then there is a jump, it jumps into here, and then if you want to do drills, they are here, pre-drills, spot drills, taps, and then if you want to do end mills, they're down. So it isn't the most efficient, but I found that if, if I reordered the tools, so they, so number four would be 10 millimeter, it it was annoying in another way somehow. I'm, I'm not sure exactly why, but it didn't work as well. But anyways, how are my tools modeled up? So this is a bad example. Let me pick my face cutter here. This is an exact representation of the CAD model, even including this little radius or whatever you want to call it, the chamfer, so the profile of it is just as perfect as I could get it, and it is just an exact representation. And that's what I do for all the tools. As you can see, my probe also, I, I modeled this holder to make sure it looks exactly like the probe. So, in any case, like once I get my FARF axis. I'm for sure going to be super happy I did that because you want to have the simulation as accurate as possible. And and I do really like this. Um, whenever I put the tools in the machine, I measure their length, their stick out with uh, with just uh, just my calipers and I put that number but round it down um, into here. So if I, this was like 16.5 stick out and I, I set this to 16 length below holder. So now, if I have a simulation where it has to go 60 millimeters down, I will see near contact. I will basically see that it's contacting. In the simulation, um, 
but in real life I've still got like half a millimeter left so that's kind of my my reasoning behind this actually what the hell I did not know you can pin stuff that is super cool okay yeah that's I'm gonna make some use of that for sure um, anyways how are my profiles set up here the cutting data let me show you this because this this I really like I've got presets are different feed per tooths here for the face mail let me pop into yeah here and as you can see the finish is 0 0.2 millimeters step down this is like four millimeters this is four millimeters just different uh, feed per tooths and basically that's really it I do usually use the medium because even though it does calculate theoretically to six kilowatt it ends up being a lot more than that if you take, you know, like the full step over width at 4 millimeters. That is like a 12 kilowatt cut or something. And that's basically maxing my spindle and my work holding. So that's super creepy. So I usually run this, but reduce the step down to like 2 millimeters. That's been the, the standard that I've used in like a template. But anyways, um, with end mills, I've basically always just got two recipes right now. Side cutting and slotting. And the only difference here is uh, some end mills have slightly different uh, feed per tooth for slotting versus side cutting. But here it's usually just step down is 15, step over is 5. So 50% of 2, because this is a 10 millimeter, so 5 millimeters. And step down is uh, 1.5 times tool diameter, so 10 plus 5, 15. And then slotting is 1 diameter times 1 diameter. So that's basically it. And I've got every single tool like that. Sometimes with multiple pro uh, presets like here, sometimes with, with just one preset. Um, often I just, you know, I just put one preset. I, I don't really ever change that. I haven't played around much with uh, feeds and speeds. I usually do the same feed per tooth that I do for, for basically this, you know, well, if we look at the 10 millimeter, this 0 0.1 millimeter feed per tooth. I usually use this for finishing as well and the surfaces are pretty nice like I could slow down it would probably be nicer but from my experience it's been very good so far so that's my in the machine current tool library then I've got my tool library of all the tools that I own with some exceptions I've got some um, some weird you know end mills here that I just left here when I was experimenting like this uh, engraving or chamfer chamfer mill which I don't actually own but I would I would like to buy one I, I need to buy one actually so yeah this is kind of sometimes just uh, playing around um, the thing here is that tools 0 to 100 they start at 20 this was in my machine both of these were in my machine just recently so I didn't change it yet but ignore these but they always start above 20 meaning that if I port them over into here they cannot overlap with any existing tools and I need to physically change the tool number to make sure you know it's like a sanity check and then uh, basically 30 uh, tool number 30 to tool number 99 is aluminium stuff which I don't have that many of yet um, but what I don't have many of even more uh, is steel stuff which is 100 and up. So these are all my steel end mills with, with their holders. And basically, yeah, that's, that's how I have it organized. So I know, you know, you could have, theoretically, you could have like a folder as aluminum, a folder as steel. If you got a ton of tools, it's gonna be better. But for me, this is like easier to, to go through and, and pick. And then I've got all the ho holders modeled up exactly like in real life, as you can see, every single holder is just like exactly accurate. And I will give you guys this. If you want to pause it, go through the pain that I had to go through to, to model this. Um, here's the values to, to make the tool holder for the probe. And then you basically, if you, if you pop into here, the tool itself, you just set the correct 
length of this and, and then you've got the model so hopefully that can help somebody anyways let's go and let's add the tool this so first things first I already have measured this tool I mean sorry actually let me flip this so it makes sense I already measured this tool here in CAD I measured from here to here which is like 90 millimeters I measured from here to here which is like 5.8 I measured this diameter which is 32 I measured this which is uh, 30 and uh, I measured up until the edge of the insert basically mm. and so I know the shank exactly like this is not necessary but it's nice to do it uh, and it's a good thing to get used to so where do we end here 51 uh, let's do this as tool 21 for example because that's going to be the first tool I'm going to get it in the machine very soon hopefully so this is a ball nose mill because it's got a radius so now I, I pull up the the tool um, I do the name of the tool I do 32 millimeters by 10 millimeters is length of cut and diameter by length of cut Pass tooling product ID I always do part IDs I always do links so in case I I don't have to search if I want to buy it so cutter anyways it is a carbide two fluter, 32 millimeters thick. Um, the overall length is 125. I think that this is something I'm gonna set later, but I do expect it to be like 50 or something fairly low, maybe like 60, but, but I doubt it's gonna be much bigger. The shoulder length is gonna be the same, which is 10 as flute length. And corner radius is absolute insanity, three millimeters, because this is like one hell of an insert for roughing. Yeah, three millimeters. Anyways, let's go into the shaft. So let me pull up my measurements here. Okay. So the first part has ninety millimeters, and it's thirty-two to thirty-two. Then we've got. 32 to 30 and that's six millimeters then we've got 30 at 16.5 that is exactly this tool see let me actually try to uh, do it this way fusion won't let me move it but you can see at least the profile that should match. You, you won't see the the whole edge correctly, but that doesn't matter at all. But you've got this, and basically, yeah. So, okay, sorry, I, I made it full screen. Um, now, holder, I'm gonna be using, because this is a Weldon. I don't think I have a Weldon this large. Jesus. I don't think I might have a holder this large in general. A 32 millimeter holder. I'm gonna have to buy a 32 millimeter holder. Let's say it's this one, but I'm I'm gonna have to order one for sure. Uh, I did not realize that. So after putting in all the parameters here in the cutting data tab, um, I basically used what HSM advisor told me to use and just made it uh, slightly less aggressive. Um, this is like a seven kilowatt cut, so I'm gonna have to slowly uh, do different step downs and uh, test so I don't you know over overload my spindle I would hate that to happen um, but yeah anyways the parameters there's there's not much to, to really comment here you can use step down and step over here fusion not always really acknowledges that this is like specified here so it can be a tiny bit of a problem sometimes and you have to kind of double check um, that that's correct and, and sometimes change it over um, and what I like to do is here I write um, I have like a heavy cut here so let me quickly add another preset let's do medium and I usually do like a let me actually pop up HSM advisor really quick it's gonna load up here um, super cool app by the way as you can see um, let me just quickly show you 
um, you can put all of this stuff here and it's going to tell you the feeds and speeds are correct and, and sl stuff like that. It's going to recommend you depth of cut, width of cut. It's going to tell you how much um, horsepower or kilowatts that's used in and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's super cool. Um, <clears throat> anyways, I will just pop in the numbers for the medium cut. I want to do like a four millimeter depth of cut instead of eight and keep the numbers the same doing a much higher chip load but I don't actually think I want a much higher chip load. Uh, actually, sorry. Let's do... So I was doing 8 millimeters before. Let's do 4 now. So I'm just gonna do 4 here and I'm gonna do... I'm gonna tell that it's 2500 feet and it's gonna give me the MRR which is 320 so I'm going to do medium, 320 centimeters cube, and it's 32, so full width by 4 millimeters depth. And I can add another one, and it will be finish, and that's going to be whatever MRR, um, and it's going to be 30 by 0 0.2 millimeters. And that's going to be 0 0.2 here, and that's going to be 30, so we get some nice over. And I'm going to do that at 10,000 RPM. I'm going to switch to feet per two 0 .0, 0 0.1, let's do. That should make a pretty fairly nice uh, surface finish. There we go, that's it. That's how it gets organized, how I use it. I always have flood on here. I don't have uh, through uh, tool flood uh, sadly so that's not an option for me but uh, that's basically it I accept and that's our tool fully uh, modeled up fully added to fusion and uh, yeah I hope this was helpful to some people I, I hope if, if you're not understanding exactly how how the library works this this uh, could shine some light on that and uh, yeah, that's everything for me uh, I'm gonna play around and, and see uh, how much faster this is gonna be than my current 10mm anvil. Okay, take care. Bye.